Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for attending today's Lunch and Learn webinar titled Improving Writing in Online Discussion Forums. This is the third uh, Lunch and Learn of the semester. We have one more coming in December, and we would love it if you would attend that one as well. That one is going to be on designing and teaching a fully online art history course, and the presenter on that is going to be Rebecca Glenn, who is one of our adjunct uh, instructors here at the Mount. At this time, I'm going to cover a few housekeeping items. Uh, we want to let you know that the webinar is being recorded today, and this is so that we can distribute the video to others who may not be able to attend, or just simply maybe people would like to learn more about the topic, so we'd like to be able to distribute the information. Uh, you won't be required to use a microphone like we are today, or use your webcam. Uh, if you want to talk with us, you can certainly use the chat box below on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. We will have time for questions at the end and we actually in this one will have an opportunity to have a discussion. So uh, please use the chat feature to ask any questions or provide any experience that you may have on the topic. We're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves so I'll let Gina go first. Hi everyone, welcome again. My name is Gina Evers and I direct the Writing Center here at the Mount. Um, just in case you're not familiar with, with the Writing Center, let me give you just a brief overview. Um, our goal is to provide supplemental writing instruction to the campus community. Um, so typically what that looks like is students will make individual appointments at the Writing Center and I have a team of tutors who I train uh, to work with their peers one-on-one -on -one, and they teach writing one-on-one -on -one to peers. Um, we also do a few other things on campus. We do quite a bit of co-curricular programming, so perhaps you have seen emails from me announcing some of those programs and events. Um, and I also work quite a bit with faculty around support for teaching writing in the classroom. I do in-class visits and develop ad hoc writing lessons. Um, I also consult with faculty a fair amount on designing writing assignments and implementing innovative writing projects into the classroom. And my name is Kayla Gorey. I'm the project coordinator in the Office of Online Learning here at the Mount. Uh, in my role, I assist students and faculty when teaching and learning online. And broadly, the goal of our office is to provide support for online and hybrid programming on campus, as well as provide support with the Learning Management System eClass. So with that said, we'll introduce some of the goals of our webinar today. First, we will define what an online discussion forum is for those of our viewers who may not be familiar with uh, what a discussion forum is, and we'll describe their pedagogical benefits. We'll identify some best practices for composing writing assignments, such as a discussion forum. We will discuss concerns about your student writing in the online discussion forums. And lastly, we'll identify some resources for you and your students to continue support with you in your online teaching and online writing teaching skills. With the hopes that all of these things will provide you with some strategies to improving your uh, students' writing in the online discussion forums. So first, let's just broadly define what a discussion forum is. A uh, discussion forum is a virtual space, and in our campus, we will use uh, our learning management system eClass as that virtual space where students can engage with classroom content and also with their peers. It's a great tool for those of you who may be interested in using asynchronous assignments as part of your course. Asynchronous means that it's not happening in real time or it's not happening live. And this is a great benefit for you if you find that you may not have time to continue an important discussion during your class hours. It's also an excellent tool for building course community outside of your classroom. And it's a great opportunity to provide an opportunity for your students uh, to um, express themselves in a written format maybe versus verbally. Um, you may notice that some of your students, their learning styles vary, and uh, we'll go over some of the ways that you can use a discussion forum to um, really enhance every learning style. So what are the pedagogical benefits of using a discussion forum? First, they offer an opportunity to have a deeper conversation that can't always be had in your actual classroom setting, whether it's because you just simply don't have the time to continue such a discussion in your classroom, or your content may not be conducive of such a discussion to happen in a live uh, format. 
And also, depending on the modality of your course, meaning whether it's traditional or fully online or even hybrid, they can supplement or replace completely an in-class discussion. So, of course, if you're teaching in a traditional format with, when you're meeting with them a number of times every week, maybe you would use a discussion forum to supplement uh, some of your curriculum that you're, that, you're, you, that you're currently covering in class or versus when you may be teaching online or hybrid, you're not meeting with them as often or maybe at all. And a discussion forum can really help you connect with your students and help them to connect with the class content at that time. To continue on some pedagogical benefits, uh, students can also prepare for in-class activities through a discussion forum and possibly even do some group work in a forum. Um, for example, students can discuss a pre-class reading that you may be having them complete uh, before class and maybe uh, maybe you could provide them with some background information on something you're going to cover in class and ask them to discuss it before they attend your class. So again, that's that's more supplemental, but also very beneficial. And lastly, uh, discussion forums are obviously very useful as an assessment tool, but we've also seen a number of faculty members use it as a participation grade for their course. Um, so because discussion forums are so interactive and they have to be um, in those discussion forums often in an active discussion, uh, it's a very good tool to kind of not only gauge their knowledge on the topic, but also see how involved they are in your course and, and how they're interacting with one another. So what makes an engaging discussion forum? Again, this, this is going to be more strategy uh, on how to improve that writing that you want to see from your students in the discussion forum. And it really all begins with your activity design. So what are the things that you can do to make sure that you're encouraging them to use their best writing skills in the online environment? First, you want to make sure that your topic is obviously connected to your learning outcomes and the current topic of the course. So, for example, if you're familiar with our learning management system eClass and you have been using it uh, in a weekly way um, to post your content uh, for the week, you may not want to have a discussion happening in week two on a topic that you may not be covering until, say, week 10. Um, so you just want to make sure that the, it's congruent with what's happening in your course at the time. You also want to make sure that it's encouraging peer-to-peer -peer interactions. So, for example, they'll have to post an original response to the topic at hand, but you may also require them to respond to one or two of their peers as well, and that would encourage them to talk amongst each other about the topic. You as the instructor also want to make sure that you're highly involved in the discussions going on as a facilitator of, of knowledge and the discussion. Uh, many instructors find that um, they aren't seeing the type of participation that they'd like and we always encourage them to to get involved themselves and and kind of post within the discussion forum as a participant themselves as well and that will show your student that not only are you active on the uh, on the discussion forum but that that's what you expect from them as well you want to see them as involved as you are and lastly, you want to make sure you're providing very clear expectations for your students as far as uh, their participation in the forum and the more practical items as well. Uh, perhaps you would want to see a number of words posted, so 500 word post, or you would want to see them using a specific citation style when talking about research. Um, those are the types of things that you want to let them know very early on so that they know that you're, you're taking this assignment seriously and that they should as well. So how would you create those expectations? First, you want to make sure that you are providing them a statement in your syllabus on how discussion forums are going to be used as part of your course so that they know uh, what, what to expect moving forward. You also want to make sure that uh, you are letting them know again exactly how you want them to participate in those forums. So do you want them to post uh, an original response in addition to two replies to their peers? Do you want them to use a specific citation style, etc.? You would also want to supply students with some resources that could help them prepare for a discussion forum and also prepare, prepare for good writing in those discussion forums. And we'll talk about a few of those today. Uh, we have a number of videos that we're going to provide uh, that you can distribute to your students, um, text resources, websites, that you can all encourage them to go visit to learn more about how to do their best in a forum. And again, you may consider wanting to um, 
actually reiterate those expectations within the discussion prompt itself. So when you're creating the discussion forum and you're developing the topic or, or the question that you want them to answer, maybe providing them again with your syllabus statement on discussion forums or reminding them to visit your syllabus again to be familiar with uh, exactly what you expect of them. So at this time, I'll hand it over to Gina, and she's going to talk a little bit more about the writing component of a discussion forum. Thanks, Kayla. Um, so as Kayla was just describing, you know, those expectations and making them really clear for your students are really important. Um, you know, as students come in through the Writing Center with assignments from their classes, I would say, you know, everything kind of stems back to two main reasons. And it's a, either a miscommunication around what the expectations were, um, or it's a lack of skills. Um, and so the lack of skills we're going to get to a little bit later. But for now, I really want to stay focused on expectations and be sure that we're clearly communicating them to students. Um, so my question for you is not so much about um, 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 are your students meeting your expectations, but rather just being sure you articulate what your expectations of students' writing are for yourself. Um, and to, when we're doing this, thinking about online discussion forums, there's really two options in terms of writing assignments um, that can be used when you're using an online discussion forum. So I want to take us through quickly just the differences between high stakes writing assignments and low stakes writing assignments um, and think about how we might apply those types of assignments, types of expectations for writing specifically to the discussion forum context um, or environment maybe is a better word. So first, let's talk about high stakes writing. Um, I think this is what most of us think of when we think of a typical academic assignment. Um, the goal of high stakes writing is to communicate and to communicate effectively. Um, you know, students are using a professional register and specific conventions of your discipline that you are working with them to write within. So when you when you're thinking about a high stakes assignment, um, these kinds of assignments definitely employ specialized terminology. They employ discipline specific conventions. Um, so for example, if you're writing a lab report, you know that needs to be written in the passive voice. It needs to be written in the third person because that's a, a discipline specific convention for the sciences. Um, high stakes writing assignments definitely employ discipline specific expectations around integration, attribution, and citation of research. Um, you know, so if you're working in the sciences, you're looking at APA, or maybe you're even looking at um, ISO 690 or this, the citation requirements for a specific scientific journal that you want to expose your students to. Um, so all of those are very discipline specific expectations that you're expecting your students to perform and to meet. The structure of high stakes writing assignments also tends to be very formal. Um, so there is a particular genre within your discipline that you're working within. So you're writing a legal memo that has specific structural requirements. You're writing a grant proposal. Again, there are specific subheadings and purposes for each of those subheadings. Um, are you writing a case study, a lesson plan, right? All of these documents are discipline specific and have their own dictated structure that you want your student to follow. For high stakes writing assignments, the audience is usually external, um, so it's a simulated or real industry outside of the classroom. You're preparing students to write this uh, you know, with the audience of a specific academic journal in mind, um, or for a client that you're preparing them uh, to, to get used to working for after they leave the classroom. Um, and the student, the writer, always has a professional role. Um, the sequencing, um, here when I say sequencing, what I mean is how is this writing assignment um, broken up into smaller components over time? And usually a high stakes writing assignment is the final product. Um, it's the final product after many drafts, many revisions, um, conferences, peer review, uh, that final polishing, proofreading, you know, this again, I kind of think of it as the standard academic essay, high stakes writing assignment. It's sort of that perfected, polished, finished product that we all strive for when we think about student writing. 
So um, this is pretty distinct from low stakes writing, which is what we're going to move into next. Um, so the, the goal of low stakes writing is writing to learn rather than um, to communicate that developed idea. So low stakes writing, its goals are brainstorming, developing ideas, making connections across course content, or maybe you know making a personal connection to a course content connection. Um, Ensuring understanding, so you know, Kayla mentioned you can use discussion forums as an assessment mechanism. Um, low stakes writing can do that too, right? Where you're checking in to just be sure, hey students, did you get this? Did you understand this material that we read together? Um, low stakes writing also can have a goal of reflection um, or engaging in metacognition, right? Um, so let, give me a window into how your brain's thinking about this. Um, low stakes writing can, can really be an excellent way to do that. Um, so the structure, again, uh, in in contrast to high stakes writing, um, for low stakes is often informal. Uh, so the focus is on thinking, it's on developing a voice or the ability to, to discuss course material in your own words. Um, the role of writer is not professional. It's not a professional role that, th that you're casting them in. Rather, it's an expressive role. Um, so how am I understanding this? What do I think about this? Have I got it right? What are my questions? Um, so it's really a, an expressive role rather than a professional one for the writer. And here, um, rather than having an external professional audience, the audience is the instructor and, and perhaps even peers. Right? So th this is the kind of assignment that um, really kind of creates the microcosm of discourse rather than trying to get students um, to create that polished professional publication ready essay. Sequencing for low stakes, um, it can be one component in the scaffolding of a high stakes assignment. Uh, so you might begin with several of these kind of lower stakes assignments to get students thinking, brainstorming, developing a topic, making connections, and then eventually what they started with in the low stakes assignments will evolve into becoming that, that you know, standard academic essay that we all think of. Um, but it doesn't have to. You know, a low stakes writing assignment can, can also just stand alone as a, a you know, a singular um, activity for students to engage in. So hopefully, you know, as you're thinking about high stakes writing assignments and low stakes writing assignments, um, you're already, you know, seeing the connection between some of those benefits that Kayla described a few moments ago and seeing that they really match up with the low stakes writing assignments. Um, and I think this is, you know, I mentioned already that much of um, what we see from students that come into the writing centers, you know, their frustrations, their concerns um, stems back to either uh, a mis communication of expectations um, or a lack of skills. And so you can see here, I hope, that some of the miscommunication that happens with students about online discussion forums is that they tend to work um, as low stakes writing assignments, um, but professors and instructors often have high stakes writing assignment ex expectations in terms of the formality and the structure and the citation, um, but students don't view them quite as formally as that. That's not to say that they can't work as high stakes writing assignments. Um, I know in the Writing Center we definitely have had uh, students come in, particularly in the graduate nursing program, um, who have you know very clear expectations from their instructors about using online discussion forums, and they you know they are to have um, very meticulously cited source material, um, and they are lengthier, and you know they they are they are definitely treated with that. Um, high stakes writing assignment mentality. So it's not that it can't be done, um, it's just that you as the instructor need to be clear about what your goals are for using the online discussion forum um, and then again clearly communicating that those expectations to your students I think really goes a long, long way. Um, so now that we have defined a little bit about, okay, well, when I'm using this online discussion forum, um, you know, what are my goals? Am I looking for that highly polished final essay, or am I really just looking for a check-in point for my students to, you know, know that they've understood the material, they've thought about it a little bit before we're about to have a class discussion? Um, what are my goals? How, how can I relay those to my students? I want to take it a step farther um, and think about, okay, 
well, now that I know what my goals are, how do I communicate those goals to my students? Um, so I have for you just a, a, a few best practices for composing writing assignments that I want to share. Um, so first, a, a compelling writing assignment clearly describes the writing task. Um, this is important just so that students very clearly know what it is that's expected of them. So are they supposed to reflect? Are they supposed to analyze? Are they supposed to compare? You know, what is it that they are supposed to be doing in this discussion forum post? Um, good writing assignments explicitly state the purpose of the writing. Um, so for example, you might say something like, I want you to analyze the reading because your next writing assignment is going to be a literary analysis and right now what we're doing is practicing those analytical skills that we talked about in class. Um, so giving them that why behind the writing task is really helpful so that they understand that there's a larger purpose and this isn't just kind of a, a piece of busy work that you're asking them to do. Um, it really allows students to have more buy-in into the writing that, that you're requiring of them. Them. Provide a distinct audience and role for the writer. Um, so I can't tell you how many students come in and say, well, the audience is my professor. Um, and, and we always say, well, let's think about that. You know, your professor already knows this material. And, uh, you know, you've been reading all of these journals, or, or excuse me, all of these articles from this particular scholarly journal. So, you know, what is it that your professor is really coaching you to try and do here? Um, so eliminate some of that confusion for your students and give them the distinct audience and give them what their role is. Um, so again, in the case of a discussion forum, if you're taking kind of a low stakes approach, you might say something like, you know, your audience here are your classmates. So what questions do you have? You know, they've read the same reading as you have. How can you help each other and, and really think about this critically? Um, sometimes just making that clear and explicit goes a long way in terms of improving the quality of writing and the quality of discussion that you're going to get back from students. So again, showing them the inherent meaning in this work and, you know, this isn't just a, a system of hoop jumping that we're all going through for fun. We're doing this because we are having a discussion and that discussion mirrors the kind of discussions that happen among academics in this particular discipline. Include expectations around appropriate conventions and formatting. Um, so um, I'm sure many of you kind of gasped when I when I suggested a moment ago that in a in a low stakes writing assignment you wouldn't have strict. Um, expectations around citation. Um, but let me give you an example of, of where this might make sense. Um, so let's say I am teaching an English class and um, we've just read a short story. And what I am trying to do is get students to pick out specific themes or literary devices or characterization in the short story and you know I'm priming them for a, a literary analysis essay. So if this were a formal high stakes writing assignment, every time that they uh, referenced this short story, of course, they would put in their, you know, their specific citation, the, the author of the story, the page number. But if my goal in this low stakes writing assignment is really just to get them to pick out specific elements, I might say in my expectations, um, you know, or my assignment sheet for this low stakes writing assignment, okay, um, the only source that you should be working with this is the short story itself. Everything else should be coming from your own brain. I want to see your analysis. I want to see your thinking, your work around what you're going to do with this short story. So because of that, I'm not so concerned about you citing the author's name. Like, I, I assigned you the short story. I read the short story. We're discussing the short story. I know who wrote the short story. You know, do include page numbers because that's going to be helpful for you as you develop your larger essays. But for the purpose of the dis this discussion forum, I only want the short story and your brain. So there should be no citation of any other kind of material, right? So it, in that sort of case, it's, it's more of an informal use of citation, right? It's, it's not the, the specific works cited page with the detailed list of, of works referenced. It's specifically, you know, the goal is trying to get you, the writer, the student, to engage with this particular literary work because we're all working with the same literary work and we all know what it is for this particular low stakes assignment. I'm not concerned with you citing the author's name every time you you know, paraphrase or pull a quote from the work. 
so again, um, it's not about uh, um, you know one one way is the right way. But if you feel comfortable with this, you know, if students are being distracted by the pressure of citation so that they can't get into the analytical work that you're trying to get them to do, you know being a little bit relaxed about that expectation for one specific assignment and making it clear can really benefit the, the analytical and critical thinking work that you're trying to engage students in. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, include evaluation criteria. So how are you grading them on this? Um, you know, what, what, is the, what are the specific things that you're looking for that, you know, that makes an A post or a B post, et cetera? And finally, sequence the writing assignment. Um, so for, for if you're doing a lower stakes, um, you know, uh, one and done kind of assignment, then there wouldn't, really wouldn't be sequencing. But if these discussion forum posts are part of a larger project that you're working towards throughout the course of the semester, um, you know, sequence, sequence these, you know, smaller low stakes assignments so that they naturally build to that larger piece. Um, that really provides students a lot of support um, and makes them much more likely to be successful in meeting your expectations of the writing um, when they do get to that more formal high stakes writing assignment. Okay, but what about students' poor grammar? What about posts that don't say anything, either because they're too brief or because they're filled with fluff and jargon? What about plagiarism? Um, you know, I know that, that you all have these concerns, and these perhaps are the reason that you're joining us today for this webinar on improving student writing. Um, so you're saying, okay, Gina, you're talking about all of these assignment design things, um, but my students have poor grammar. So what I would say in, in response to that is, again, you know, when I see these folks come through the Writing Center, it, you know, all of, the, all of the problems kind of come back to two things. Either one, that, that miscommunication around expectations, um, or two, a lack of skills. Um, so here, you know, if you're seeing that your students really have poor grammar, um, and you've been really explicit about what your expectation is in terms of the formality of your posts, um, I would say, you know, number one, start there. But if you've been really explicit, and you're still seeing a lot of just really unacceptable grammatical missteps, I would say that's an indication that your students are lacking skills. And there's a couple of things that you can do about that. Um, you know, I, when I talk to faculty, I often hear the concern, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a psychology teacher and I have so much content to cover, um, I can't also teach them syntax, right? I can't teach them what a sentence is. I can't teach them how to use a semicolon because I have too much content to cover. Um, well, that's a time where the Writing Center can can be a really good resource for you um, and write a little note on your student's draft and say hey you know I really see you struggling with semicolon use and with sentence structure they can help you with that in the writing center um, and if students come to us having already identified the skill that they need improvement on that makes it super easy for my team to say absolutely we can talk about sentence structure absolutely let's talk about semicolons and, and comma splices and and um, you know get get you the, the skills that you need so that you can be successful. Um, I would also say that, you know, where your comfort level is in teaching some of those um, facets of grammar will, will dictate how you respond to this. Um, you know, some professors have pet peeves about particular grammar rules that just drive them crazy. Um, it's okay if you only address your pet peeves because the, you know, the beauty of, of having our students for four years is that every different instructor has different pet peeves. So even if we're only addressing our individual pet peeves because we all have different ones, as they progress throughout their education, they're actually going to get a you know, a, a pretty solid um, foundation of um, uh, all the different grammar rules that they that they need assistance with. Um, so I'm hoping that if you have specific questions, you know, now is the time that you will share them. Um, I could sit here and talk about grammar all day, but I don't know that that would be particularly useful for your specific concern that you have. Um, so please feel free to, to comment and ask questions, and I can definitely address your specific concerns around students' poor grammar that, that you may be experiencing. Um, you know, a, another uh, frequent complaint that I see regarding discussion forums is that they don't say anything. Um, so either they're so mired in using ornate language and the jargon of the discipline that you kind of can't 
get a sense that the student actually understood it, um, you know, because they're just parroting this language and in the hopes that, you know, they, they'll sound smart or, um, you know, they think that's what you want or they think, well, you know, this is, this is how it sounds to me, so that's how I'm going to make my post sound. Um, I think that's one problem that I've seen. Um, and, uh, and the other problem is just the one sentence answer that, that really just isn't long enough to um, have any substance to it. Um, so here, I think, again, this kind of goes back to either expectations or skills. Um, if, if they're having that um, really fluff and jargon filled post, um, that's a time where you can really proactively use your expectations to say, hey, I'm looking for your specific opinions about this. You know, again, this is an informal writing assignment. Please just like talk to me. Um, I think that's something that, again, clarifying expectations can go a long way and improving the, the writing that you get back from students. Um, um, or, or I know Kayla mentioned a, a, a length, a length guideline earlier. You know, again, a clear expectation can can really address this problem before it becomes a problem. Um, and then finally, plagiarism. You know, I, I, I know that this is, has always been a concern, and then when you're working in the online environment, it becomes even more of a concern because it's so easy to just copy and paste, um, you know, and you have everything there all on the same screen. So um, again, expectations and skills. Um, you know, I think all of us do a good job of making our expectations around academic integrity pretty clear to students. Um, but I, I find in working with students in the Writing Center that the you know um, uh, plagiarism awareness is so nuanced, and it's never the instance of um, you know kind of blatant, knowing, knowingly executed copy and paste. Um, where students get really upset. It's, it's more the nuanced situation where, you know, I didn't realize that I had to cite myself or um, I, I thought that I paraphrased that sufficiently enough and I cited it, but it turns out I didn't paraphrase it sufficiently enough and I didn't know, you know, I didn't know how to paraphrase appropriately. Um, so there, there's like a skill building conversation to be had, not just sort of a disciplinary one. Um, so I think it's really important that when we work with students around issues of plagiarism and academic integrity, um, that we're also educating them a about the skills that are required. So, so what is a sufficient paraphrase and what isn't? And, and when do you need to put quotations around, um, you know, even if it's just one single word that you've pulled from the original? Um, and really teaching them how to navigate those more nuanced uh, situations or scenarios when it comes to academic honesty and, and writing, um, I, you know, I think the, the skill building piece there is really important as opposed to just taking the scare tactic of, well, you know, if you plagiarize, you could get kicked out of school. Um, I think that makes students freeze up and then they are so terrified of that consequence that they um, are scared to engage in the material and that, of course, is not what we want. You know, we want them to engage in the material and have the skills necessary to navigate the material. So um, I don't know that I have specifically addressed a, a concern about plagiarism or, or any of these bullet points that you might have, um, but I certainly am welcome and open to comments or concerns um, around these issues or, or any other kind of common writing complaints that you see from your students. So perhaps we'll uh, maybe we, we wait a few moments to see if um, anybody would like to respond or share their experiences. We can move on to sharing some of our resources that we've compiled uh, for the purposes of today's webinar to share with you. Um, sure. If we move on to the faculty resources, is that good, Gina? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's great. Let's move forward. Okay. Perfect. So we have uh, just two resources listed here, although if you contact uh, the Office of Online Learning or the Writing Center, we'd be glad to provide some more depending on the concern that you have. But um, the two that we've listed here uh, are, are mainly on discussion form use a, as an assessment tool or an activity that's a part of your curriculum. The first that we have here is actually from Cornell University Center for Teaching Excellence. And the other is uh, from Brown University. And that one is a little more practical. That one's a little more step-by-step -step on how to kind of implement this type of activity into your curriculum. 
And for students, we have, uh, again, we have a great resource from the University of Nevada Writing Center that you can share with your students. And basically, it's a document that kind of outlines a, a, what a really good post should look like as far as the writing that they use, as far as uh, their approach, and, and actually how to build a, a post, a response. So that's a great resource that we'd like to share. And then another one that we like to share is actually developed by the Office of Online Learning here at the Mount. And it's a short four minute video that you can put right within your course or right within your discussion forum um, that, that your students can view before actually posting. And this video is uh, more best practice centered uh, for students. So for example, um, we, we cover netiquette skills in this video, so online etiquette, how to be professional in the discussion form environment. So it's less about I'm um, using good writing skills, but more about um, how to how to be professional in that kind of environment and um, use your best skills. So that's that's a few resources that we'd like to share. Again, we have some additional resources that we'd be more than happy to share um, if you'd like to contact us for those. I see Tom is writing, so I'm just going to give him a moment to finish his thought before I move forward. So Tom says he sees that his students enjoy using the discussion forums, and I've heard that a lot from our faculty members that we've worked with in the Office of Online Learning, and I really think that's because they get to talk amongst each other and learn from each other. Um, in In the case of accelerated courses for adult degree completion or in the graduate programs. Um, this is especially useful because they're actually sharing their firsthand experience in the workforce through a discussion forum. Um, in the nursing division, they, they or the School of Nursing, I should say, they use discussion forums quite a bit. And in those forums come some very, very, very interesting discussions about um, student experience in, in the nursing field and, um, and so on. So, I've definitely heard that from other people, and, and I'm glad to see that you, Tom, have had that experience as well, and uh, I'm sure you'll probably utilize discussion forums in your upcoming courses as well. I know you, I think you have quite a bit in the past, if I remember correctly. Okay, so... Again, if you would like assistance uh, with the discussion forum feature of eClass, or I should say the function activity of eClass, we can help you set those up. We can discuss the different types of forums that you can implement into your course. Um, or if you'd like to simply talk uh, with an instructional designer about the pedagogy or the approach you'd like to take with using a forum, we'd be glad to help. All of our contact information is listed here, but you can also visit our website and see all of these things as well at onlinelearning.msmc.edu. Or you can simply call our office phone line, which is extension 3457 if you're on campus. Or you can email us. So there's a few different ways to get in touch with us. I also definitely welcome you to be in touch with the Writing Center, um, and if you want to send your students our way, that would be a really wonderful thing. Um, so here I have all of our uh, contact information. We're located on campus in the Dominican Center, um, so if you know where the Dominican Center Cafe is, we are the office on the right immediately before you hit the, the DC cafe. Um, so that's where we're located. Um, again, we take individual appointments from students. Um, our hours are from 10 a.m. in the morning uh, to 8 in the evening. Um, so we have evening availability if you're working with uh, uh, students who have full-time jobs or folks that just have a busy schedule. Um, you know, we, we really strive to be accessible to everybody. Um, the appointments uh, are about 50 minutes long, 5-0. Um, so we really set aside a good chunk of time for the students to work one-on-one -on -one to really improve those writing skills so so again I know I've said this uh, you know all all hour long but um, most of the problems that we see really can can be traced back to either a miscommunication around expectations or a lack of skills so what we can do in the writing center is definitely supplement the writing instruction that that students are receiving in the classroom by skill building right skill building their 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 writing um, efficacy and and then the other piece we can do is is be sure that they're clearly understanding 
understanding your expectations and your written assignments. So that's another reason, um, just as an aside, to, to be sure that you have well-composed writing assignments is because when your students then bring those assignments to the Writing Center, it helps us ensure that they're meeting your expectations at that, and that we're supporting them and work, working with them toward meeting your specific expectations. So similar to the Office of Online Learning, um, we are accessible in a whole bunch of ways. Um, you can email us. Um, we have a really robust portal site. So if you visit the my.msmc portal, uh, click Offices, and then click Writing Center, we have resources for faculty archived there. Uh, that's how you make an appointment um, or, or encourage your students to make an appointment with us. It's there on our portal site. We've got resources for students. We've got lots of handouts on various writing-related uh, skills, um, there's information about our events, our annual essay contest, so all of that is archived on our portal site and I would really encourage that, you know, if you're interested in, in working with the Writing Center or just using some of our resources, um, that's, that's definitely where you'll find it. Um, you can also connect with us on social media. Um, we have um, a, a, a really uh, fun and engaging social media presence that, of course, is all writing related, but you know, we, we work really hard to make it attractive to students and, and we keep it light and engaging. So um, that's another way to kind of connect with us and learn a little bit more about what it is that, that we do here in the Writing Center. Great, so at this time, we would love to open it up for more question and answer or discussion. Um, if you do have any questions or you would like to share some more experiences that you've had, you can certainly enter them into the chat box. Also, uh, if you'd like to receive some resources from us, uh, some direct links to the things we talked about today, um, please give your email address using the chat box and we'll be sure to email those things to you. If you're watching our webinar at a later date, uh, please feel free to contact either the Writing Center or the Office of Online Learning depending on what your needs are and we'd be glad to share those resources with you in the future as well. If you would like to propose a topic for a future Lunch and Learn webinar, we would certainly welcome that. Uh, you can contact Kristen De La Salle, Director of Online Learning at 845-569-3439 or you can email her at kristen.delasala at msmc.edu. Again, we welcome any ideas that you may have uh, for future Lunch and Learn webinars, um, even if it's just sharing your personal experience uh, with your online teaching or, or anything, really. We, we would love to um, talk to you about that, so we welcome those, those suggestions. Okay, so I don't see anybody writing anything in the chat box, so I will assume that nobody has any more questions or comments. So uh, we will conclude our webinar today. Again, thank you for attending. We really appreciate it, and we appreciate your participation in the Lunch and Learn webinar series. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Yes, thank you all very much. Um, I hope this was helpful. And uh, just to reiterate what Kayla said, you are certainly welcome to be in touch with the Writing Center or with me directly. Um, you can get me at gina.evers at msmc.edu. And I certainly would be happy to, to consult one-on-one -on -one if that would be helpful. OK, thank you, everybody. To exit the webinar, you can simply click out of the window. Thanks. Thank you.